Runner FM. It's about time you hear how multi-directional conditioning came into the Runner F training program. So years ago, I was a strength and conditioning coach at the University of Nevada. One of my primary roles was a return to play athlete. So I worked alongside our medical staff to make sure that our athletes were progressing through not only the rehab stages, but strength and conditioning properly to get back on the field to play. Now we had an athlete who broke his tibia and fibula in a night game at Boise State. That blue turf was a lot less cool after that. Now this was a devastating injury for this individual who had so much talent and so much ambition. He had a metal rod inserted into his leg which changed his body mechanics, but the medical staff eventually cleared him and let him play football once again. Now my job as a return to play specialist, as I mentioned, was to bridge the gap between rehab and full participation in football once again. So once our medical staff initially cleared him for return to running an introductory phase was the end of May. We had eight weeks from the end of May till August to get him prepped and ready for fall camp. So fall camp is very vigorous um, with two-a-days, strength and conditioning. Um, it, it's just a time period where a lot of athletes have a lot going on. Now returning is an all-conference player. He was expected not only to play 60 plus snaps in a game, keep up with up-tempo style of offenses, lead his defense, but also to be better than he was the year before. Our margin for error was slim to none at best, so the biggest challenge for us was to make sure we didn't do too much too soon and risk a hamstring injury or something like that that would give us another setback. The other challenging part was we did not have athlete monitoring systems to give us some in-depth data as other colleges had. What we had use of was a heart rate monitor strap that went across his chest on a wristwatch. So we were able to get a little bit of data, but the athlete coach feedback was something that was very important and the proper planning of what we were going to do leading up into August was extremely important as well. Once we had the blueprint drawn up, we sat down and went over the eight week time period that was planned out. Now there had to be a little bit of flexibility with that because we were coming from nothing, right? So in an introductory phase into running, there could be days where we have more soreness or days where we don't wanna take a chance. On the flip side of that, if we're very well recovered at the beginning of the week, there could be some days where we wanna take more chances at that point. But once again, our margin for error was small, so the athlete coach feedback was critical for us to make this work. Now the first two weeks of this were confined to straight line running with limited changes in direction, limited jumping, and extensive or slower paced deceleration drills. The standard of conditioning in college football at this time was still to run 110s or to run bleachers. Now, I had been lucky enough to be a part of some programs that were on the forefront of performance at the time, and they were doing some position-specific conditioning things. Now, these were team settings, and I was on a one-on-one -on -one setting, so I got the ability to modify these things and progress them over that eight-week time period. So what we did was we created actions that looked similar to what he was gonna do on the field. So yes, we still ran some longer stuff to accrue some volume and 100 yards at a time, but we also ran things such as S-curves, we ran some zigzags, we ran some shuffle intervals, we backpedaled, he backpedaled on a weave, we did some sprint stop and start change of directions, but all of these things were built on shorter rest times to prepare him for up-tempo style of offenses, and once again, the speed of play with what he's going to see in fall camp. So we only ran this session one time per week. I didn't want to beat him up with all the changes in direction because once again, fall camp was coming soon and I needed him to be in shape, but I needed him to be fresh as well. So what we did was our first session was actually week three. So now we only had six weeks to get ready for August. I asked him to perform all of the actions and movements at about 75%. And what we did was we broke it up into subsequent sets, as you would see within a football game, right? So there might be a three-play drive or an eight-play drive, things of that nature. I kept it pretty standard for him. We operated in, you know, five, eight set intervals. But I asked him to increase the speed of movement every week as long as there was no pain and residual fatigue from the previous sessions. And I also chipped away at the increasing volume. And we had to decrease the rest time at some point, too. He was not prepared for... 18 to 22 seconds in between plays at the beginning of this. But by the time August rolled around, the results were incredible. Now, once again, we only had heart rate data, so we could look at that together in session, and we went over it, and what we saw in session was actually the 100-yard sprints compared to the changes of direction. All of the changes in direction, the stopping and starting, his heart rate spiked. The 100-yard runs weren't quite as bad with that. Now, this really prepared him for what he was going to see on the field, so we knew we had something here. 
the coaches could not believe how good of shape he was in. I remember our safeties coach and our defensive coordinator continually telling us that he was the most in shape athlete. What was he doing? And really, this was a trial run. So this was, you know, the first time we had done it together and, you know, it worked. You know, there were three things that I learned, which is impacting the way that we are training officials to this day. The first one is that conditioning is not solely linear. I'd been a part of programs in the past that ran a lot of 100s, 110s, and we get into fall camp and the coaching staff still says once again, hey, our guys aren't in shape. What have you been doing all summer? The next thing is we followed the acute to chronic workload principle, which set us at a hard stopping point each week so that we knew we could train hard up to a certain point and we could increase each week up to that point, you know, without the risk for injury going way up. And then the last thing is we got him accustomed to the specific movements that he was going to see on the field of play. So I think that that was, you know, one of the most critical things. And those three takeaways right there are driving the run and ref program today. They're helping us progressively get officials ready for their sport, whether it's on the field or on the court and the actions that are necessary. So we start out linear and we gradually change the movements over the course of the year. And it's helping us prepare officials, keep them out of harm's way, and make them better and better, and really do what we can to support the third team. Let's get to running.